For over 200 years, rumors concerning an enormous, dinosaur-like animal have been reported by natives, big game hunters, and missionaries who have braved the dark and hostile swamps of the Congo. Much of our early knowledge about the plant and animal life of West and Central Africa came from missionaries and explorers. In 1776, the Abbe, Laivane, Bonaventure, Proy Art, wrote, in the history of Loango, Kikongo, and other kingdoms in Africa, about a group of French missionaries, who had found the tracks of an enormous, unknown animal, in the jungle. Pinkerton's translation, published in 1914, reads, It must be monstrous, the prints of its claws are seen upon the earth, and formed an impression on it, of about three feet in circumference. In observing the posture, and disposition, of the footprints, they concluded, that it did not run this part of the way, and that it carried its claws, at a distance, of seven or eight feet, one from the other. Prints this large could only have been made by an animal, the size of an elephant, but elephants do not possess clawed feet. What kind of monster was it? In 1913, the German government decided, to survey its then colony, of Cameroon, and chose, Captain Freiherr von Steinzulausnitz, to lead the expedition. Von Stein included the following fascinating report. A creature very much feared by the Negroes, of certain parts of the territory, of the Congo, the Lower Ubangi, the Sangha, and the Ikalemba rivers. They called the animal, Mokele Mbembe. The animal is said to be of a brownish-gray color, its size, approximating that of an elephant. It is said to have a long, and very flexible neck. Some spoke of a long muscular tail, like that of an alligator. Canoes coming near it are said to be doomed. The animals are said, to attack the vessels at once, and to kill the crews but without eating the bodies. The creature is said to live in the caves, that have been washed out by the river, in the clay of its shores, at sharp bends. It is said to climb the shore, even in daytime, in search of its food. Its diet is said to be entirely vegetable. Occasional reports appeared in the newspapers concerning dinosaurs in Africa. This November, 1910, article in the magazine supplement of the New York Herald asks, Is a brontosaurus roaming Africa's wilds? And again, in 1948, an article in the Saturday Evening Post, suggested, there could be dinosaurs, living in Africa. Very little was heard of Michaeli Mbembe until 1976, when herpetologist, James Powell, from Texas, traveled to Gabon, to study rainforest crocodiles. Powell picked up stories from the Fang people, about an enormous river monster, called Nyamala, and a local witch doctor called Michael Obang, picked out a picture of a long-necked dinosaur, from a child's book on dinosaurs as being a dead ringer for the Nyamala, which he saw exit a jungle pool in 1946. Powell later conveyed this information to Dr. Roy P. Mackle, a biologist from the University of Chicago and vice president of the International Society of Cryptozoology. In 1979, Mackel and Powell traveled to the People's Republic of the Congo, to investigate Mokali Mbembe activity, which Mackel believed would be centered in the Likawala region, a huge area of seasonally inundated swamps, that was left blank on most maps. In the northern town of Mpwondo, situated on the Obanji River, Mackle and Powell met with the Reverend Eugene Thomas from Ohio, a missionary who had served in the Congo since 1955. Thomas had heard many stories about Mokali Mbembe, and sent out for first-hand eyewitnesses who had seen the monster. At first, Mackle was reluctant to believe that he was on the trail of a living dinosaur. Yet each witness was absolutely emphatic, 
that the illustrations of the sauropod dinosaurs, in Mackel's book, were dead ringers for the Michaelium Bembi. According to Mackel, The witnesses, described animals that were 15 to 30 feet long, mostly head, neck, and tail. The head was distinctly snake-like, a long thin tail, and a body approximating the size, of an elephant, or at least that, of a hippopotamus. The legs are short, with the hind legs possessing three claws. The animals are reddish-brown in color, and have a rooster-like frill, running from the top of the head, down the back of the neck. All the eyewitnesses agreed, that Mokelium bembies live in the rivers, streams, and remote, jungle lakes, and that they are rare, and dangerous. Time ran out for Meckel and Powell, and they headed back to the United States, tantalized by the reports. Meckel returned to the Congo, in 1981 with a larger team, and this time attempted to reach the remote, Lake Tully, a small, shallow body of water, situated in the heart of the swamps, where at least one Michaelium Bembi was reportedly speared to death, by forest pygmies, in 1960. Unfortunately, the near water channels, that led to the lake, from the unexplored by river, were jammed with fallen trees, making passage impossible, with heavy dugout canoes. One flutter of excitement occurred, when the expedition was rounding a river bend, just south of the town of Ipena. A large creature, had abruptly submerged, near the far bank, producing an 18-inch high wave that buffeted Mackel's canoe. Crocodiles do not leave such a wake, and hippos that do, are not present in the area, for they have all been chased away, by Michaelium bembies, according to the pygmies. Also in 1981, Herman Regusters, an engineer from Pasadena, California, led his own expedition to the Congo, and managed to reach Lake Tully. During their exploration of the lake, Regusters and his wife, Kia, observed a long graceful neck, ending in a snake-like head, emerge from the water, about 30 feet away from their inflatable raft. The creature, regarded the astonished explorers, for a few seconds with its cold reptilian stare, before slipping silently under the water. Towards the end of their expedition, the Regusters team heard, the ear-splitting roar, of a huge animal, as it crashed through the swamp, near their camp one night. In May, 1983, Congolese biologist, Marcelin Ananya, led a small expedition, to Lake Tully. He claimed to have seen Mokalium Bembi in the lake, but failed to film or photograph, the animal. He later, drew this picture, of what he saw. Some critics, believe, that Tananya, saw, a giant freshwater turtle, which is known to frequent the lake, and made up his story, of observing Mokalium Bembi, to attract scientific expeditions, to the Congo. In 1986, three expeditions, attempted to find Mokalium Bembi. Dutch biologist, Ronald Botterweg, and his team, reached the lake in March 1986, but did not observe the monster. He was closely followed, by William Gibbons, and his team. The Gibbons team found, that the villagers of Boa, were regarded as the guardians, of Lake Tully, were too afraid, to explore the northern end, of the lake, as this is where Michaelium Bembies, have been observed. American explorer, and writer, Rory Nugent, met Gibbons in the village of Rapenna, and discussed with Gibbons and his team about their own adventure. Nugent later claimed, to have observed a Michaelium Bembi at Lake Tully, but the villagers loudly forbade him, to get any closer, in order to photograph the beast. His book, Drums Along the Congo, documents his experiences there. In 1987, Roy Mackel, who was unable to return to the Congo due to financial constraints, released his book, A Living Dinosaur? In Search of Mokalium Bembi. 
the book became the definitive work on this subject. In 1988, a Japanese expedition went to Lake Tully, but were abandoned at the lake by their guides due to a dispute over money. The team managed to find their way out of the jungle and back to civilization. In 1992, another Japanese expedition flew over Lake Tully and filmed a large object crossing the lake. Critics believe that the object was either two natives in a canoe or an elephant. By 1998, the Congo War had made it impossible to travel to the country. Gibbons mused that perhaps it was worth looking at Cameroon again, as the animals had been reported there in the 1940s and 1950s. It proved to be a fortuitous decision. Gibbons traveled to Cameroon with David Wetzel from Concord, New Hampshire. The two explorers teamed up with animal tracker and translator Pierre Sima and interviewed the Baca pygmies who identified the pictures of sauropod dinosaurs as an animal they call Lachila Bembi. It was the same as Michaelium Bembi, but in a different language. The animals were observed from time to time in the Boamba River and the Ja River. Some of the local fishermen also saw the animals in the Sunga River, confirming earlier reports from five decades previously. Since 2001, Gibbons has returned to Cameroon on four more occasions with his colleagues, Milt Marcy, John Kirk, Peter Beach, Brian Sass, Robert Mullen, and Squad Norman, collecting new information on Lachila Bembi. In 2012, the team heard large, unidentified roars from a huge animal south on the Ja River. The team had located an area where Mokalium Bembi activity is frequent. However, the lack of funding has stopped them from returning to secure the ultimate proof of Mokalium Bembi on film. If you think you can help with fundraising ideas, then please contact us.